Next guest tonight is the top Democrat in the United States Senate. You know him as Chuck from the hit show Chuck and Nancy. Please welcome Senator Charles Schumer. Ain't gonna let no Stuff, huh? Oh, uh, they're great. They are. Happy Martin Luther King Day, Senator. It's to you and to everybody. Yep. Good to, uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're here tonight. We actually asked you to come on the show a while ago, so this this booking is uh, is uh, kismet, as my people would say. <laughs> yes. But um, <laughs> what? How's your friend Donald Trump? Getting worse every day. Really? <laughs> What do, the, 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 the word is, the buzz is, that you guys can talk a language that, 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 that he can understand, that he, he likes you. You actually said off mic on C-SPAN, he likes us, he likes me anyway. Ah, it's gonna work out. One of my wrong predictions. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, this was a long time ago. This was a that. while ago. It started out, he would start out by flattering me. Uh, that didn't work, so he tried to call me names. Neither works. We stick by our values. They're very far away from where Donald Trump's values are, and frankly, where most of America's values are, and so we are, we're, we're standing strong, and we are the check on Donald Trump. Well, <laughs> we, we, we know about uh, what uh, historians will call S-hole gate <laughs> uh, from, from last Thursday. Um, well, just, uh, just a little while ago, this afternoon, this afternoon he tweeted, Senator Dickie Durbin totally misrepresented what I said at the DACA meeting. Do you have any doubts that Senator Durbin is telling the truth when he says that the president said repeatedly that uh, why do we need people from the... I have countries? no doubts. Look, first, Donald Trump has lied so many times it's hard to believe him on anything, let alone this. But second, I've known Dick Durbin for 35 years. He was my roommate for 20 years. We shared a little row house. He is one of the most honorable people I've met. I have never known him to prevaricate, to lie. I totally believe Dick Durbin, and I think most Americans do, too. Many people... <laughs> uh, many people look at this and, and what the president has said and, and just said, okay, well, Donald Trump is a racist. Do you think that Donald Trump is a racist? Look, his comments over and over and over again can be described as nothing but racist and obnoxious. He says he's not a racist. Well... He's the least racist person. The least racist person you'd ever speak all to. All time. So I have a challenge for Donald Trump, okay? Ac actions speak louder than words. You want to begin, just begin that long road back to proving you're not a racist, you're not bigoted. Support the bipartisan compromise that three Republicans and three Democrats have put on the floor, everyone gave, and get the dreamers uh, safety here in America. That's what he should do. And, and let me say this, Stephen. That bill, Donald Trump at one point said, well, there are three areas of contention. We've tried to, uh, the three of them, the six of them, tried to go somewhat uh, in his direction on those three areas in return for dreamers. If this bill doesn't become law, there'll only be one thing standing in the way, and that's Donald Trump and his intransigence. If it was put on the floor of the House or the Senate, it would get a majority vote in either one. Do you think those are his intransigence, or do you think that he is just being um, pressured by the farthest right on immigration policy in his own party? Well, you know, if you're going to listen to the farthest right, we will never have an immigration policy. They're not where America is, and they're not even where the Republican Party is. You can't let a small group on the extreme govern. It's a fa formula for failure. Um, what's he like to negotiate with? Oh. Because he is... <laughs> he is... You've been negotiating with him for months. Yeah. Um, uh, you've known him from yeah. back in New He's, York. He, yeah. He's supposed to be an expert negotiator. Oh. Okay. Art of the deal, my friend. Right. Art of the deal. So, so do you says, see the art in his deal making? Yeah, the art of failure in just about every deal he makes because he has two ways of negotiating. One, he'll shake your hand and the next day totally back off. Nancy Pelosi and I at the White House had an agreement with him on dreamers for border security. Sure, sure. He agreed. 
and the next day got pressure from this hard right, he totally backed off. That's what he does over and over again. Or his other way of negotiating is saying, here's how I want it, you do it my way or else. He wasn't a very good negotiator when real estate deals in New York, and he's been the reason his administration has been such a failure so far, one of the many reasons, is he's a poor negotiator because he uses only one of those two tactics. Now, the word is that when you and Speaker Pelosi met with him, that you kind of played on his love of New York and kind yeah. of got him on your side. And we actually, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, we managed to get a camera into that meeting. <laughs> Uh -oh. with, our <laughs> with our friends from, uh, from Showtime, from our, our cartoon president show that's coming up in two weeks, we actually have a clip uh, <laughs> of, of our cameras catching the three of you negotiating. Jim? Just know you can't soften me up with a bunch of New York talk. Of course not, Mr. President. We're not going to talk about New York. What about it? I was taking the Staten Island Ferry the other day. Empire State Building. Hudson River. Katz's Deli. Pizza! Uh, uh, train track! Central, Central Park. Park! Five! <laughs> accurate? On the money. Pretty accurate, good. Left out one thing. Brooklyn! <laughs> That's where I'm All from. Right. Oh, I totally get it. Now, um, let me ask you, there's a slightly different subject, but it has to do with the changing uh, Senate. Do you feel like the Democrats will take the Senate? Do you, do you, are you confident yes. you're going to take it back? Uh, we're working real hard at it, and I think the odds are greater than half we will take back the Senate. Absolutely. And the House, there, there's... I think always... the, house, the House odds are very good, too. Mm -hmm. In part, we have a real friend in taking back the House and Senate. Donald Trump. <laughs> right. Well, do you think that people will then be voting for Democrats or against Donald Trump? Because, and I mean this sincerely... Yes, you do. This year, yes. what does the Democratic Party right. stand for? So, look, we have to be a strong check against Trump, but that's not sufficient. We have to show average folks that we're on their side while Trump is on the side of the wealthy and powerful interests. If we, if we do both will take back the House and the Senate. Well, you lost one of the stars of the Democratic Party this year, one of the, the biggest fundraisers for the Democrats, and Al Franken. Yes. How do you, looking back on how that was handled, that Franken was asked to resign uh, against his will, as you can tell from the speech he gave, before the ethics investigation was over, do you feel now that that was the right thing to do? Well, look, I mean, I, I am a strong believer in uh, Me Too. Women have been... Uh, abused, taken advantage of in so many different ways that I think that a strong stand in that regard is very important. Um, you can look at each individual case, as you should, and people should get some protections, but I have a great deal of sympathy for the women who say this has gone on too long and we have to be really strong to fight it. Well, Senator Schumer, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you, Stephen. Thank Chuck you Schumer, much. everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Black Eyed Peas. Thanks for watching my YouTube video. Now it's your turn to thank me. Click subscribe, and at the end of the next video, I'll thank you again.